glorious church, this glorious church. No, I was born, I was born, I had a new birth. Some glorious day, gonna sail away. By his grace, not by my works, I'm in this church. I'm in this church, this glorious church. No, I didn't join, oh, I was born, I had a new birth. Some glorious day, gonna sail away. By his grace, not by my works, I'm in this church. When Jesus came, he was left out. There was no place he was welcome here on earth. But he had a plan for a house that shall forever stand. He spoke these words upon this rock, I'll build my church. Amen. I'm in this church, this glorious church. Oh, I did Oh, I was born. I had a new birth. We're going to sail away. By his grace, not by my I'm in this church When Jesus came He was left out There was no place Where he was welcome here on earth But he had a plan Oh, a house that shall forever stand These words upon this rock Build my church I'm in this church Amen, ain't you glad this morning? Hallelujah Joy, well, I was born I had a new birth some glorious day, we're going to sail away. By his grace, not by my works, I'm in this church. Yes, I'm in this church, this glorious church. No, I didn't join. I was born, I had a new birth. And glorious day, I'm going to sail away. By his grace, not by my works, I'm in this church. Amen. If you're glad you're at church this morning, give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. Wow, it's good to see everybody this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 What a great Sunday morning. Amen. Look like there's a couple of empty seats out there, but we're just going to praise and we're going to fill in for their spot. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in church. Good to see everybody. Welcome to First Assembly Mulberry. Good to see everybody. You online as well. Good to have you guys with us this morning. We're just going to sing and worship the Lord this morning. Y'all just join in with us. I think God's got something special in store for us this morning. Amen. Let's hit it. Well, I can feel that, that, that Holy, Holy Spirit dwelling deep within. And sometimes yeah. it's it feels so gentle. gentle. And sometimes it's like a mighty rush. Spirit that raised Jesus up oh, from death and the grave. Well, it shall raise this old body up. Yes, we'll take me home someday.
here on earth, but one of these days we're going to wear a robe and crown in glory with Jesus. Amen. If I don't get you excited as they say your woods wet, amen. It's something. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm going to wear a robe and crown. Amen. Page 113. Glory to his name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 113. Down at the cross where my Savior died And down where from cleansing from sin I cry stepped out of this kind of the Easter season there and what Jesus done for us. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Amen to his name. Yeah. Amen. Uh, turn back towards the back of the book and we're going to sing page 401, the unclouded day, 401.
the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me I'm a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children then, and his smile drives their sorrows away. And they tell me that no tears ever in that lovely land of uncloudy days. Oh, the land of cloudless days. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Amen. There's coming a time when all the troubles and the trials of life is going to be washed away. Amen. No more clouds and rain. No more. Su just all sunny days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 199. We're going to that place where the soul never dies. 199. make us a way where we can go where the soul never dies. Amen. No, no, no uh, sad farewells, no tear dim dies. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord. If the ushers will take their places this morning, we're going to go to the Lord and uh,
prayer on the offering here and take up our Sunday morning tithes and offering. Amen. Brother Kent Novak's going to make preparations. He's going to bring her special this morning. Amen. Amen. Brother David Rowe, would you pray over? All right, well, we're going to do this. We've done it before. We're going to do it again, but we're going to ask for audience participation. If you'll watch Aunt Shirley, she has a great clap for this song. <laughs> your heart out. Amen. That's good, guys. Awesome. Amen. Arthur, Keith, amen. Sister Laverne. That's pretty good right there. I'll tell you, that is good. Amen. Amen. You know, God did tell Joshua to march seven times around, and it kind of may sound a little bit you know, unordinary or something. He may call on us to do something sometimes that's a little bit outside our comfort zone or a little bit... Um, you think, man, is that really God telling me to do that? But if you look through the Word, there's so many times that He tells His, uh, you know, before He blesses somebody to do something that is a little bit off the wall, but God has it all under control. Amen, amen. Well, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Amen. The Word says if um, the elders would agree together and pray uh, for the sick and stuff, that they're going to be healed. Amen. So we're going to go to the Lord this morning for prayer. We want to remember... Um, Wayne Sossman this morning, God has continued to do a blessing and healing in his life this morning. We also have, um, I don't see Shirley Obar here, so let's continue to remember her this morning. Tender healing in uh, Sister Tammy, I see her here this morning. Uh, Linda Rogers and Brother Eddie's not here, so let's continue to uplift them. Uh, I know that uh, 
Linda's sister, uh, Artie Pruitt, is still in the nursing or uh, rehab there in Van Buren, so continue to lift her up. And um, lots of needs this morning, amen. If you've got a need this morning that you want us to pray for, just by the upraised hand, we're going to pray for that need this morning, amen. Thank you, Lord. Unsaved loved ones, um, those that are battling with uh, sickness, amen. We're just going to pray God's going to heal them and going to hear our prayers this morning. Remember those that can't be with us this morning because of uh, physical abilities, they're, you know, our shut-ins, Miss Anita Ward, um, those that's on our list here, uh, Miss Ola May, uh, Grandma Cagle, Lord, bless them. Uh, also, let's remember our military men and women and our firefighters, our policemen, all those that protect us each and every day and uh, allows us to be able to do the things that we do. Let's lift them up that God would have uh, protection upon them as well this morning. So if y'all want to stand this morning, we're going we're gonna to start off with a song this morning and then we're going to pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Great. We thank you this morning for grace. We thank you, Lord, for things that we don't deserve this morning. God, we just praise you, God, for your love, for your mercy. We praise you for the spirit that we feel here this morning, Lord. We thank you, God, for each and every one of these lives that is a living testimony of your grace, your power, and your mercy, Lord. God, we've lifted up names, Lord Jesus, here this morning, Lord. We want to call them out to you this morning. God, you've seen each and every hand that's been lifted here, Lord, and every need that it represents, God. I pray, Lord, for lost uh, family, lost friends, God, that you would bless those, Lord, that you would call them, Lord Jesus. Let us be a witness to them some way that would change their life, Father God. Lord, I pray that you would bless those that's sick in body this morning. Lord, those that is battling cancer, Lord, those that is battling with uh, heart problems, Lord Jesus. Those that may be still battling with this COVID stuff, Lord. We just ask and pray, God, this morning that you would bless them with the healing this morning. God, we lift up Wayne Sausman, Lord. We pray for his back, Lord. We pray for Sister Linda, Lord Jesus, uh, Rogers, and Brother Eddie, that you would lift them up this morning. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, for the blessings, God, is uh, upon Shirley Obar this morning, Lord, that this sugar and the things, Lord, in her blood, God, would just be under control, Lord, by your spirit, God, that she'd be able to get out and to function, Lord, Lord, without all of these pills and the different things that she had, the medication she has to take. Bless her with the healing, Lord, this morning. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, for Sister Gordy, Lord, I pray for her and sis, God. Bless her, Lord Jesus, that she would recover, Lord. God, that she would be strengthened, Lord Jesus, there in that rehab. God, that she would be able to get out and do the things that she used to do again, Lord. God, I pray for all of our shut-ins this morning, those that are unable to be with us. God, I lift them up in prayer this morning, Lord. You see their heart and you see their kid, Lord Jesus. They want to be here. But bless them, Lord, where they are. God, I pray for those that's watching over live stream, Lord. God, I pray that you would lift up them, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would touch them this morning. For whatever reason that they can't be in church, bless them, God. God, I pray for brother and sister Fielder, Lord Jesus. Lord, lift them up, God, I pray. Minister to them this morning. 
God, I pray for those that's lost loved ones, Lord Jesus. I pray your hand of peace, Lord Jesus, be on their life, God. Minister to them, touch them, and give them comfort in their life, Lord. I praise you, God, for our military, for our firemen, for our policemen, Lord Jesus, for our security that we have. I praise you for this great land of the United States, Lord. I praise you for great veterans, Lord, that have stood and fought fearlessly, Lord, to give us the freedoms, Lord, to, that we have, that we enjoy, Lord. Bless them and touch them and minister to them, God. I pray you would, would heal them, Lord Jesus, of the things, God, that they've got going on in their minds, Lord. Bless them, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the great sacrifice that they have done. Lord Jesus, I praise you for this church, God. I praise you, Lord, for each and every member, Lord Jesus. Continue to bless us, Lord, and lift us and guide us, Lord. Thank you, Father. We love you. We praise you, Jesus, for that. God bless our, our, our country, Lord Jesus. Bless our leaders, Lord. Those that make decisions for us, Lord God. I pray, God, that a great repentance, Lord Jesus, would come forth in this country, God. Lord Jesus, before it's too late, I pray that we would find your saving grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we know that this is truly holy ground, and we believe that you've heard these prayers this morning. You've heard these requests, God. Bless and touch each and every one, Lord. God, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. We are standing on holy ground. Oh, one more time. Let's go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our stand. God got us ready for, for the things that he wants to do and work in our lives. Amen? Didn't this choir do an awesome job this morning? My, my, my. They are, I tell you, doing it. Our musicians, so appreciate them. Our children's church is going to go across the way and, and uh, enter into the part that Sister Elaine has for them. I'm so thankful, so thankful. A couple of things that we want to uh, share with you right before we get into the word and allow God to um, just to bless your heart. We appreciate all that you are doing and, and ministering to help one another uh, in things. Brother C.L. Haston sent us a, a thank you card for the offering that they received. Uh, just wanted us to know how much a blessing this church is. Uh, got to the plane, and I, I, a place he said I could no longer fulfill the physical demands of the islands of South uh, Pacific, so he thought it was best to retire and come off that field at that, so uh, we, uh, he wanted this church to know that they are.
Y'all blow my mind. But I can tell you, she worked 30 years getting to 40. Get to 40. Praise God. Woo! Don't y'all tell nobody outside this room. <laughs> amen, amen. I appreciate my wife. She's a, she's a wonderful girl. I tell you what. Without her... You would look at a, you would have an eyesore in front of you because I always ask her, do I look okay? Does it all match? I brought her the first tie this morning. She says, no. I said, well, you couldn't miss. No. Okay. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're so thankful for your kindness, your consideration. We really appreciate it. Amen. I have another card I wanted to share with you just a moment, Sister, Sister Eva. Um, Millsap gave us a card as she went through a lot of things with, with her, her husband Jimmy and she said thank you church family. We've enjoyed the, the plant and the entire state was in the hospital and all the prayers. And the card that you sent was brought to us that you all signed was so very precious. Jimmy Dale did ask the Lord to forgive his sins that keeps me going, she says, and she loves you and appreciates you so very, very much. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Sister Eva, we appreciate you and love you. And next week, without her permission, we're going to receive a love offering for Sister Eva to help her along with some things that's going to be going on next Sunday. So we'll be doing that. She didn't give me permission for that. I'm doing it without your permission, and I know you wouldn't give it to me. So, yeah, I got the look. Have y'all ever got the look? And the finger pointed. It's all right. Tell Jesus on me. Will you do that? Tell Jesus on me. I appreciate that. I'm so thankful that we're able to serve God in such a place as this and with people that love God. Amen? Just another thing to mention that's Friday night. We're having a meeting over at Safe Haven and... Um, if you're interested in being a blessing and reaching hearts and the young people that's up and coming in this community, you uh, be there and meet with Sister Monica and Brother Keith. You be there at, uh, what's that, 7 o'clock. And it won't be a long meeting unless you want to eat for a while. Bring something if you want to eat. That's how you do that. And... Uh, <laughs> It'll be a great thing as we set up some things. God has made a way for us to touch the heart and the upcoming uh, young uh, participants of this community's uh, welfare and being and doing things. I'm going to tell you, it's, it's just a great uh, blessing that God has put in our pathway as a church and as a blessing. I know COVID has affected some things along the way, but you know what? There's nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Everybody say nothing. nothing. It's too hard for God. I serve that God. And I'm glad that I do. I'm glad that you do and that God brought us to the kingdom for such a time as this. What an Easter Sunday marvelous. It was. Amen. It was fantastic. Praise God. We, we numbered up about... Uh, between 160 and 170 on that day for attendance here. That was awesome. Thank you for reaching out. Now we want to do that again. Well, don't we? You invite people. Let me tell you something. If you're not excited about your church, don't expect anybody else to get excited about your church. Amen. Well, how do I get excited? Come see me. I'll give you a jack up. I know how to do that. You could be in the graveyard, or even worse, you could be in the hospital missing a limb or two. I'm glad I got all my faculty. Well, most of it. Somebody said, I have a half a mind. I said, please don't say that. It might come to pass. I've met with some people that don't have a half. They only have about a fourth. I want to use all I got, don't you? And I so appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being... Who you are allowing God to use you as a church to greet one another and to minister to one another and, and to draw people 
Never pass up that opportunity to minister in the name of the Lord. Tell people about Christ. We were talking about in Sunday school class this morning. I believe Brother Jesse was saying, you know, people ask him sometimes, how do you handle this, that, or the other? He said, man, that's an open door. I get to tell them about Jesus. And the Bible said, be ready to give them an answer when they ask you the question. The thing is, am I doing things that makes people ask the question? What in the world are you thinking, can I tell you? Amen? And that needs to be more than your spouse saying that. All right, I can see y'all ain't going to play along on that one. Amen, amen. I love Jesus, amen, and I know you do too. The book of Luke today, chapter 18. I want to talk about crying or crying out. We have a lot of crying in our land. It's amazing how things are. I talked with a person who is on the inside of some of the destruction that's been going on around the country in a particular place and said people are so different than they ever have been in the course of our culture uh, in America. And people are so belligerent and people that have been in the pathway of the storm, not everybody, but many have, have become just so hard to deal with, unappreciated. They said, you know, what happened was for two weeks, uh, lots of free help showed up and people did what they could. They had to get back to their jobs, back to their families. And, and so they come for two weeks in some of the areas and, and then they had to go back to their families. And so it kind of leaves a, a void and a vacuum. And so people kind of get the attitude, you still owe me. You still owe me this. Let me tell you something. Nobody owes me anything. I appreciate everything I get. I appreciate the blessings that come my way. But I learned one thing. No one owes me. I owe God. And if God will lead me, I can bless whoever he leads me to. And you can too. Amen? And if you find that opportunity, fall into that opportunity and let God use you, all right? So what I'm saying is don't become bitter and unappreciative of the things you get to. If you lose everything today, can you still be thankful? Amen? Can you still be thankful? The book of Luke chapter 18, how many found that in your Bible? We'll have it on the screen in case you, amen, didn't bring your Bible today, and God forbid you're not like that. Don't ever go out without your weapon, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Amen? Luke 18 and 1, and he spake Jesus spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't faint now. The pastor's fixing to preach. Oh, y'all didn't bring that in, huh? Uh-huh. Verse 2, saying, there was in a city a judge that feared not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city, and she came unto him and said, Avenge me of my adversary. He would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says. One of the few times God's going to tell you to listen to what somebody not saved is saying. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. Would you bow your hearts? Father, we want to hear what you breathe into our hearts this day, that we may better serve you in this moment in time forward than we have in days gone by. You're continually informing us, educating us, teaching us 
that we may be more effective for you and the kingdom as each day passes by. We want to bless you. We want to exalt you. We ask you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to help our ears to hear the things you speak and say and then give us, God, that anointing to press through and press forward to execute that which you impart to our lives today. It's in Jesus' precious and holy name. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise, and all God's people are saying, amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. God bless you. How many has been working on your homework from Wednesday night? Mm. Now that wasn't as many hands as there was here. We had homework for Wednesday night. And I'm going to tell you what, it has, it has really been an awesome thrill to me. We ask everyone Wednesday night to write down one name on a piece of paper, fold it up, one name of one person they most want to see saved, put it in, and we mix it all up, we pass it back out, let you draw out a name, and you're going to work on that one person for the next seven days and ask God to move on them and to bring them to the place of being convinced they need him in salvation. And I tell you, I've been calling that name out multiple times a day. One, I believe it was Brother Jess said, I work on that three times a day. I make sure I do it three times a day, lining up with Daniel's prayer that he prayed for Jerusalem. And I want to tell you, if you and I will focus, amen, on something that specific, God is going to answer. He's going to move. Whenever we pray, he said, if we pray and won't, what? Faint. That's what I just read. He said, I would that men always pray and not, not faint. Turn to your neighbor one more time. Say, you done forgot. You fainted. <laughs> you done and turn loose just in that short time. It's so easy to faint, church. We let go of things so easy. And God wants us to hang on to it so that he can move and work. This parable that Jesus gives, recorded by Luke, tells us some things. It shores up some realities in life so that we can grab a hold of some truths that will propel us forward. These parables are designed in the Bible to tell us about life without naming the characters, yet giving us the principles that God wants us to learn as his people. And so he does that so that you and I might be able to feel, fulfill the calling on our lives. So he puts a message in disguise, called it a parable, so that I will pray and I will dig to find out what God is wanting to say. How many wants to know what God is saying? A few years ago, a distinguished man of science, an Englishman, was reported by the newspapers to address an assembly in the, in the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., and as he did, he made this statement, I am not a praying man, he says. Now, he wasn't really complaining or bemoaning himself. He was uh, not making a confession of sin. He was just making a statement of fact. And it seemed like he was really referring that, that I'm not of a certain league of people that I, I rely on that thing of praying and, and seeking a higher power. He wanted to make sure that his statement was based totally upon his intellect and his experience and his findings. Yet in the same token, another Englishman of the same caliber, very uh, outstanding person, come forward to say something as he was on his dying, on his deathbed. And he was asked this question. He said, is there anything that you would like to, to say or, or to talk about? He said, there's one thing I want to tell you. I can still pray, and that's the greatest thing ever given to a human being. Laying on that deathbed, he said, the greatest thing I can do is to pray. And God takes people like that and lets them know that praying isn't a last ditch, ditch, ditch effort. Now, sometimes we have made this statement as people, the least I can do is pray. Don't ever say that again, please. The least you can do is not pray. The most you can do is pray. 
That's the most I could do. Call your name out before God and keep that in the heavenlies where that Satan knows, hey, somebody's working in, on this piece of property. Boys, we got to circle it and make sure the prayer don't get through. But the Bible said the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man produces much and God answers that kind of praying. Hallelujah. So he appoints you and I for such a task, such an assignment. Jesus brought a summarization in this parable down in verse number 8. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? What's the message behind the story? was what I asked myself when the Lord dropped this in my heart. Have you ever prayed for something and it seemed to get further away while you're praying for it? Thank you, Brother Rick. I guess you and I are the only two that have been praying there. I prayed for things and it gets further away as I pray. It seemed like the obstacles get larger and, and the challenge gets, gets deeper. What's going on? Well, Satan knows that God listens to praying people. And he knows if you and I are praying and touching heaven, God's going to move. So what he wants to do is to isolate that situation or person and get them extended away from where the prayer can reach them and have them stay a captive or a prisoner of his own lives. The parable gives us a formula of what the master is looking for when he comes back. Men ought always to pray and not Faint. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you listening? Mm-hmm. Y'all didn't all do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay here till you do. Are you listening? Oh, y'all got less that time. Okay. You see, when God doesn't microwave our answers, we want to throw away the crock pot. I'm not waiting on God no longer. I've got to move. Saul did that. King Saul did that. And it cost him the kingdom. Men all always pray. Fainting is a possibility for any believer. How many of you say amen? See, our Lord sees believers maybe tomorrow. How about next week, God? And Satan offers us that, that, that lingo. should be doing right now. The Bible said in Hebrews 12 and 3, he said this, For consider him that he endured a contradiction, talking about Christ, of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and you faint in your minds. That's a real possibility of a believer to faint in our minds when things are not working the way we visioned that they should and the way we prayed that they should. Things are not working. This is a reality of the Christian life. I know some will tell you, you know, you got high faith, you pray one time and it's all done. But I have found there's some times I have to pray more than once. Matter of fact, I found out there's times I have to pray more than three and a half minutes. There's times I have to pray. We were here last night praying, and God was reaching. He was working, and he was dealing with some things. And, and as he was doing that, calling names out before God and asking him to bring salvation and deliverance, God moved by his spirit, and he began to unfold some things. You and I are in a wonderful place where God can move and do things through our lives as we stand in faith. Everybody would you say, I'm standing. I like a song that says, I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm on the one that will not move. You see, the parable gives me insight to how things will play out in our journey as we live for Christ. The unjust judge is the legal system of our day. It is unjust. How many of you shout amen to that? That's who the unjust judge is. He doesn't fear God. It doesn't regard man. And, and the word that Jesus gave is very pointed to what we're seeing. Some judges in our society believe they are God. But oh, what they find out when they die. They're going to discover they're not God at all. Is that not true? And so we find ourselves dealing with a system of the unjust judge. The widow is a representative of people who have lost their coverage, their, their voice 
in the system because they gave their heart to Christ and they are now believers and now the Bible says that God will come to our defense. Aren't you glad God will defend you? Amen. He will defend you. And so you and I are left at an imposition as far as the eyes of the world are concerned. The world and its cohorts are left behind. God's saying to you and I through Christ, don't quit. Don't quit praying. Don't quit praying. Don't quit praying. Keep on praying. When you pray and it looks like things get further away, pray, pray, pray pray until you break through that that facade that veil that you break out of that cubicle you see satan knows that if he can stay at it long enough in so many lies people are going to buckle but if i stay hooked to god if you stay hooked to God, the Bible lets us know with every prayer, amen, something builds up inside me. I can't put my finger on it. I can't exactly define it, except I know this. When I pray, when you pray, God uses that to build us up. He said in the book of Jude, he said, praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up. Hallelujah. Praying builds me up to where the devil can't pierce not armor. I pray, you pray, we pray. The Bible tells me that I keep on crying out. Instead of crying, belly aching, I cry out. I cry out to God who hears. Listen, who would have ever believed many years ago Roe versus Wade would ever get overturned in this country? But somebody kept on praying. Somebody kept on reaching out and calling upon the, land, the name of the living God and say, we are going to stand against the law that will not protect the unborn. One of the un most unsafe places for unborn children is in the womb of a mother who doesn't believe in Christ. God gives us a way to deal with that. It may not happen overnight. It may not happen one year to the next. But if you and I keep on praying, we keep on pushing, God will answer, and he will do it just right. Hallelujah. Now I know, man, they're fussing, they're fighting, they're fuming about it. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? And they go through all the rigmarole. It's a woman's body. It may be a woman's body, or what about the baby in that womb? What about the baby that's growing inside that mother? Whose body does that belong to? Amen. God wants you and I to be able to be aware. You see, true prayer is this. Patient confidence in God. Patient confidence in God. He said this in the scripture, Shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, not to one another, but unto him? I cry out unto him day and night. Everybody say day and night. Day and night. Hey, it's okay to pray in the day. And it's okay to pray in the night. It's okay to pray in both day and night, is it not? Amen. How do I do that, Brother John? Listen, all you got to do is utter, draw close to Christ. He'll draw close to you. I have to mention his name. Amen. And say, Lord, I'm coming to you with this need because you want to do this thing. And God will answer his word. He'll answer that petition. That's how God does. Sometimes we find ourselves in disappointments and it's just a part of the walk of God that you and I have to work through. How many since you served God, you found this appointment to creep into your life? Thank you for all those three hands. See, I know where we're hitting because we all are human. Do you know things haven't changed since Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden? Hadn't changed a bit, has it? We're still fighting the same stuff. And they keep trying. We talked about it in our Sunday school class this morning. The, the powers that be are trying to erase history out of the minds of our up-and-coming uh, young minds so that they won't understand where failure has occurred in the past so they can go on and blunder the future. I'm telling you, we learn from the past if we'll take it to heart. How many of you parents tried to tell your kids...
We try to tell them, we try to tell them, we, we try to tell them. And you know what we get most of the time? They have a big exercise. As long as they're rolling to the left, you're okay. But boy, if they roll to the right, get ready. <laughs> we learn from the past how to plan the future. Jeremiah 8.15 told me this. Watch this. We looked for peace, but no good came. And for a time of help, but trouble came. I can't believe that the man of God would say that. All the things that's going through. But Jeremiah came to the place of fainting. He came to the place. He said, I, I just I got so tired of telling what God said. It, it was thrown back in my face and I was mocked and ridiculed. He said, I just made myself a promise. I'm not going to say anything else that God tells me. He said, as I went on, he said, it started hurting on the inside. The pain started getting great. And the first thing I know, it was so much that I couldn't even fool bear. And he said, it was like fire shut up in my bones. Oh, God, give us fire in our bones one more time. But I can't hold it in. I've got to let it out. But I let it out in love. I let it out in confidence. And I say what God has been speaking and putting inside my heart in the way I live for him. Many times looking for the answer, providence just drives the course contrary away from he said in Psalm 65 and 5 by terrible things in righteousness will you answer us O God of our salvation sometimes I I'm just not happy about the answer that I've that I've got in front of me God wants me to keep on praying God help me to understand what I'm seeing what I'm experiencing what I'm encountering because I'm on a journey I have a job I have an assignment to do for the Lord I wish that every pew in here was full today but if it was what would we do if every pew was if everybody you prayed for this last week was saved today what would you do next week Find somebody else. That's exactly right. Find somebody else. Move on to the next thing. But until that one say, what do we want to do? We want to cloud up and rain on the devil's parade. No, sir, devil. You're not getting this over on me. I'm not fainting. I'm not quitting. I'm not letting up because God has called me for this particular time and this particular uh, event that's going on. I'm going to pray. This is the way the court of heaven is set up. If, if we got everything we wanted at the time we asked, do you know what we would be like? Our politicians. Mm -hmm. We'd be like that spoiled kid that we all met in school that we couldn't stand. That kid's so spoiled they don't never. Have you ever been around people that were spoiled? That got everything they wanted? Can I give you parents teaching lesson 201? That I know it meddling's dangerous, Brother John. Don't give your kids everything they ask for. And for land's sake, teach them to earn. Teach them to earn. Amen. Teach them to work it out. Somehow, some way. My dad taught us. I don't know if Brother Dave ever taught, told you this, but my dad taught us. Amen. We, we didn't get paid for milking the cows. That was the job for the family. We didn't get paid to sweep the floors. We didn't get paid for the things that had to be done around the house. You don't get paid for things that have to be done. He said, but I tell you what, if you wash that car, I'll give you a dollar. Woo, you're going to have a clean car, daddy. And I'll wash that car. Woo, I remember the day I got a raise. He started paying me $2. Woo, -hoo. oh yeah, he come on. We lived on a... beauty things and after three rains it's all in the mud and so we lived down about a mile and a half two miles of the of the gravel the dirt you know and dad go to work every day every day five days a week he come home that car be a little dirt daddy wants that car wash I will wait till the weekend son I get that car washed. Get my two dollars. Hey Amen. That's the way I earn money. I'll never forget it. When I met Sister Kendrickson and, and uh, you know her birthday would come up, I was gonna go buy her a bracelet. Man, I couldn't wait to spend that money on my honey. Mm -hmm. 
When you fall in love with Jesus, you can't wait to spend that money on your... Y'all stopped. <laughs> Some things don't pan out at the time I'm praying for them to work out. God, in his attributes, he, he illustrated to us there's going to be some challenge. Men ought to always pray and not faint. If there wasn't an occasion for the fainting, he wouldn't have put that in the scripture because the system of injustice is always going to be against what God is for. Paul welcomed the challenge in his writing. He said in Corinthians 12 and 9 of 2 Corinthians, he said, God said to me, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So he said, most gladly, therefore, I will glory. Therefore, in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may be demonstrated, may be fulfilled, whenever I go through these things, it will rest upon me. People have got to see how God handles problems in your life. They've got to watch how you function under pressure, how you deal with impossible situations that they, they just buckle under and cave in. God wants to put a person full of faith and full of his anointed power right in front of their eyes to go through some things, not because you've been bad, not because you've done something wrong, but because he's reaching to pull them in so they'll know there's a God in heaven. There's a God that answers prayer, and you testify to the fact God is alive in my life. How do you handle it? I handle it because Christ is inside me. Christ lives in me. And Paul said to you and I, this is what gives me strength as I go on so the power will rest on me. He went on to say Jesus as he was talking in the book of Matthew 24, 13. He said, you're going to have to endure. For if you endure, you shall be saved. Endure what? Endure whatever comes your way. And learn that God will navigate you and he'll teach you how to pray. How many needs to be taught how to pray still? He says in the book of Romans 8, I don't know how to pray, so he teaches me how to pray. You think, well, after I've been saved a few years, won't I know how to pray? No. Every situation has different merits tied to it. And God is, is growing me. He's growing you. He's growing us into a place that we learn how to pray. I mean, the apparent thing probably is not the way we're going to have to pray for some stuff. I have to pray because God's working all ends to the middle. How many ever prayed for somebody to get saved and they got mean as a striped junkyard dog? Mean. I mean ugly, throw down mean. You think, my God, they wasn't that mean when I wasn't praying. So the devil whispers in your ear and says, you need to quit praying so they won't be so mean. No, you need to keep on praying harder so you get that meanness out of them. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that the believing wife will sanctify the unbelieving husband and the believing husband will sanctify the unbelieving wife. So if you live with somebody that's a little hard to get along with, wake them up one day about 2 in the morning and say, it's your tough luck, you married to me, buddy. <laughs> yes, sir. And you let them know you're going to pray that stuff right out of them. Amen. Because if they're tormenting you, it's because they're tormented already. Mm. See, people are, not, people are not ugly to you until they're ugly to themselves first. You ever met folks that are mean and hard to get along with? They can't get along with themselves. My, my, my. So our faith is going to be tried. Peter, I believe, was an authority. Here's what he gave us in 1 Peter 1, 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if it need be, you are in heaviness through manifold many temptations that the trial of your faith, would everybody say my faith? He said the trial of your faith is being much more precious than that of gold that perishes. Though it's tried with fire, might be found to praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. The master wanted me to understand. He spoke it through Peter. Who better to speak it through Peter? Peter was an emotional wreck in his life. He done good for a while. Man, he's ready to whip the whole world with a sword, and he's the only one got one. And the next thing you know, he said, I don't even know who that guy is. Now, that's a quick pivot and turn, is it not? 
I mean, you're shouting here in church. God's moving people filled with the Holy Ghost. Wonderful thing. You're ready to whoop the world. You can't even get down to the four-way stop down there before you're having a fuss out with your family. Oh, did that hit a nerve? Mm-hmm. I told you, send that seat and be quiet. Don't you talk to me no more. <laughs> no, nah, none of you here at Mulberry's done that, but I have preached in some places where they did. You and I can never give up praying. Pray always. Pray always. Satan's going to put pressure on you. He puts that pressure to try to make you and I to give up in our prayer and that we, hey amen, we are, are fighting all kind of things. But if we can understand that that's a good sign to let us know we are getting through. You see, we must never yield ourselves to the seats that hell is throwing at us. God wants us to stand firm, to stand in faith and absorb what he's doing. Let our eyes be open as it was that time when Elisha and his servant were surrounded by the host of the Syrian army. And when the servant got up that morning, the first thing he saw was that host of that army in the hillside everywhere. He said, oh, oh master what are we going to do he said oh son we don't have to do nothing they're more for us than they are with him he said father open his eyes and let him see and when God opened the eyes of that servant he said oh my lord and my God they ain't got a chance what I need is God to open my eyes when the enemy looks like he has me surrounded and he's pushing pressure on me God open my eyes and let me see there's more for me than there is against me greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world help me to see the answer not the problem and God opens our eyes Romans 4 19 says that Abraham was not weak in faith he considered not his own body dead when he was a hundred years old I can tell you what he had something on me because my body felt dead and I ain't even 70 yet <sighs> didn't consider his body dead the Bible said he didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. I'm going to tell you, the Bible's full of testimonies. Hebrews chapter 11 gives us a whole list of people strong in faith. But when you read that, the Bible said some were stones, some were sawn in two with saw blades. They were, they were beaten. They were left half dead, all kind of things. But these were people who were strong in faith, and they went through countless trials and difficulties. And, and I know we don't sign up for that church, but let me tell you, the Bible says the glory that's to come is not to be compared with the angels and the suffering that we deal with here. All our years are just like a yesterday. Now teenagers can't grip that. But you folks that's 50 and up, you can. If you're 49, you're close. You see, all my years, the psalmist said, are just like yesterday. So I have this to ask you today. When our Lord returns, will he find you and I, you and me, still praying convinced that what God promised he's going to do. Am I still going to be praying for people who are lost? For my family who's not saved? For your family who is not saved? One thing we did the other night was that we, we drew names because I wanted, to, I wanted that to be mixed up because you see you pray for your loved ones and I pray for my loved ones but I want to pray for some others and I want something specific and it seemed like the Lord led us to do that I, he didn't speak in an audible voice but I sensed that was something God wanted to do so we did it for seven days still got a few days to go but I am so I'm so pumped up about that hey man I'm expecting Expecting the name I've been calling out, come walking through that door, fall in that altar, and give their life to Jesus. When are they going to do it? Whenever God says I get prayed through and things are working just right, I got to let Him do the job because He does it better than I. My deal is to be ready when the time comes. Be prepared. Be ready to pray. What if a person's been to that altar countless number of times? Be ready. Pray every time. If my kid goes to that altar 99 times and gets back on the 100th time and you're sitting in that pew thinking, it's another time. I will, I will, I'm going to tell you what I want to do. I want to pray for you. Because I don't know which time it's going to take, but it's going to take. Because I'm still praying. I said, I'm still praying. I'm still praying. Well, you pray in unbelief. I know we went through all that mess. Ah, oh, Lord Jesus. 
you know, got to confess a, uh, you know, a camper out in my yard. And why do they want to confess things like that? If you're going to confess something, confess this. I see my husband, my wife, my son, my daughter, my grandchild. I see my neighbor. I see my co-worker. I see my clerk uh, tender at the store. I see them on fire and serving you, God. We went to Brahms last night for just a, a little bit of a treat, and, and we got there, and Sister Deanna's in there. She's serving, and I mean, it's full of people ever. I mean, full. Amen. She come up to me, and she said, you having prayer tonight? I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I need some prayer today. See, people go through stuff. And they're looking for somebody that will stand in that gap and make up that hedge and be a vessel. God's looking for somebody that won't faint. When Jesus comes back, will we still be praying for the lost? Will we still be crying out, avenge me of my adversary, God. Avenge me. The Bible says the devil is my adversary. He goes about bragging about all his victories and telling me, no use in you praying, Kendrick. Look what I've done. I've got this and I've got that one. I've got this one over here. No, sir, Satan. I want to tell you, I'm here as a vessel of God and you will not beat my God. I'll be his vessel. I'll be the conduit. He can. He will flow through. You will lose, sir. You will lose. Avenge me of my adversary, the devil. My complaining, my belly aching. They will not get me anywhere. Amen. But God wants me to come forward and to say, my Lord's coming. I want to be found doing his will. Will the Lord find at Mulberry Assembly of God somebody in this room that is still crying out and say, avenge me of my adversary, Father. I have not seen salvation come to pass in that life. Avenge me of my adversary. I see sickness trying to control their destination. Avenge me of my adversary. I'm not backing up. I'm not fainting. I'm staying the course because you are faithful, oh God. <sighs> Is he going to find somebody in Mulberry Assembly? I'm not preaching to any other church. They can't hear me. You can. <sighs> and so what God does, he offers us. Is there anybody in this service this morning that will stand up and say, avenge me of my adversary one more time. Well, I prayed it, Brother John. I prayed it. Well, let me tell you, you still got breath in your lungs? That's a loan from God because the air don't belong to me. It belongs to him. Hear how old somebody. I mean, we're into this thing of, of domain possession in this country. You know, you buy a piece of property and they get chemicals or they get stuff out from under. They want, you know, royalties are paid. And you go to New York, you got airspace you own. Whatever's above your, your thing. I got news for them. None of it belongs to any of us. The Bible said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It don't belong to him. Humans try to take a hold of that, but God has set it up where he owns it all. He said, I own the cattle of a thousand hills, and I'm going to add, and the taters that's buried under them. He owns it all. He owns it all. And if I serve the one who owns it all, guess what I am? I'm an heir and a joint heir, Brother Bill. <laughs> I'm a rich dude today. Mm, my father owns the air you're breathing, sir. Woo! And if he wants to turn off the air supply, Brother, Brother Harold got that machine going that gives him air, and that's a wonderful thing, but you know all that stuff, you turn all that off, that body goes into, it starts having trouble, don't it? Right, but mine's going. Yours going. <laughs> he put that straight right there on the spot. Mm-hmm. You cut that air off, everything changes, don't it? Ain't nothing. Your gold don't matter if you can't breathe. Gold don't matter if you don't have something to eat. I watched a thing where a man out in Australia, he was out hunting for gold. Really, this is a true story. It's all just last night. Went good for my sermon today. He went out there, got his little machine. He going out, and he said he, he didn't carry a compass. He said the sun's a compass. You know what it is? It clouded up on him. He couldn't find the sun. He got lost. He was out there for five days. No food, no water, no anything. He, he made this statement. He said, you know, gold don't matter about nothing. 
When you and I can't eat, can't drink, can't have anything, none of, I'm telling you, none of that other stuff matters a bit. Ooh, you can have the best car, shining. Listen, you want to draw people's attention going down the road? Go buy your old Volkswagen and rust it out and put a hammer of ding all over it. They'll still notice you going down the road. Some of y'all get that later, I got that. All that stuff doesn't matter. What matters is, is I, am I in line with God? Is he going to hear somebody today in this service say, avenge me of my adversary? Hmm. Anybody in here got a loved one who's lost? I see if you hear, oh, y'all scared now. Mm -hmm. Is anybody going to make a cry to God? Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. I want satisfaction because, God, you put it down inside me to have this kind of satisfaction. Avenge me. Avenge me. Musicians, would you come? Because God wants somebody that would pray that would take hold of his promises there yesterday. Somebody that won't faint. Has anybody in here fainted yet? Turn your neighbor, look at him right now and say, you fainted? Because he's fixing to give the altar call. That's the time to go to the bathroom. It's the time to go out and take a snack break. No. See, this is the time to seal what the Holy Ghost is stirring our hearts for. Because we have loved ones that are yet to get into that boat, into that ark of safety. And the way that happens is that God, he anoints us with the word of the hour. Men are all ways. Um, how much is always? Is that on Christmas and New Year's and Easter and 4th of July, Thanksgiving? You know, the, the holidays that some people go to church. Always means what? Always. All time. So precious ones, I want to encourage your heart. It's not a time to faint, but it's a time to press like not ever before. And as we pray, God hears. I, I don't feel like God hears. He never said that he heard when you felt like it. He said, draw close to God, and he'll draw close to us. That's just what he said. He, he didn't put feelings anywhere in it. I know we have feelings. God works with them feelings. He really does. But that's not how the barometer with God works. It doesn't work by that feeling thing in that category. He just simply says, men ought always. When he said men, he meant woe men too. Woe men and men pray and not faint. There are some souls that are on the edge of coming to Christ. And they're connected to this body, to this body of believers. Amen. Uh, Brother Donald, what would happen if you would have fainted just about one month before Gerald and Amanda started coming to church? What would have happened if you would have fainted? Oh, not a place we want to go. Gerald, don't faint. Don't faint. Now, you're young. you got a lot of, mm, but you got Amanda. She jabs you, keeps you going. Don't faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. Brother Lonnie, don't faint. If you trip and fall, don't faint. We all trip. We all fall on things. My Lord. We do things that we, we just, Lord. I'm preaching one service in, in a church between here and Jerusalem. It had a low ceiling in it. And, and I'm demonstrated about Jacob walking on his cane. And I didn't have a cane, so I borrowed my guitar stand. And I got that guitar stand in my hand, and I'm preaching just like I preach here. I'm preaching. And I mean, I felt, I felt that surge of that holy stuff hit me. And I was, yeah! And I rammed it right through the ceiling. <laughs> a holy hush fell over the whole congregation. And then a chuckle. And then another chuckle. And the next thing you know, everybody's chuckling. And the anointing changed, Brother John. 
but I didn't faint. I kept on going. Because <sighs> I know things happen. Well, if God had been in that, God was, he, he's in it because he's in me. And if I put my guitar stand through your ceiling, you'll still shout with me, won't you? If I put it through that ceiling, you sure going to be shouting. <laughs> you know, how did that? No. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me. Avenge me. Avenge me. Bow your heads, Father. It is the cry you placed in front of us so we would not falter and become discouraged. You put it in front of us so that we might declare your righteousness to a world that's lost touch of reality of the holy things of God. And you have deposited in us a determination to press forward, to go through one more day and serve you with all the abilities that has been instilled in us. And God, you placed unsaved, lost people in our past, in our circumference, in our circle even, so that we might pray for them and see your mighty hand work and bring deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. And you get the glory, not the person doing the praying. This is your idea, Master. We pray in the mighty name of Christ that you may minister, that you may stretch your hand into this body today. Somebody in here, God, is going to cry, Avenge me of my adversary, Master. Avenge me. They're going to play this song. We just stand on your feet still in the attitude of prayer, asking God to minister. I'm going to open this wide open. I don't know where you are with Christ, what's been going on. Maybe you felt some discouragement. Maybe you felt some distractions. Maybe some things haven't come to pass. This particular time is so that you will not faint in your prayer of faith and your walk with God, you can take hold of the promises of God and see them come to fruition. Hallelujah. Will you cry one more time? Will you cry just one more time, church? Avenge me, Lord, of my adversary. The Bible said God will answer, and he will answer at the right speed. Though the unjust judge does it, God is better than the unjust judge. Avenge me. Avenge me. Avenge me. Hallelujah. We're opening this off the time wide open for you to come. Come down. God avenge me. Avenge me. My son, my daughter, my grandchild are not going to die without you. Avenge me, Father. God wants that cry from his people. Do you come and make that presence one more time in this service this morning before you go into the rest of your avenge me, my God. Avenge me. Help us of this sickness that tries to plague me and keep me from doing what you call me to do. Avenge me, God, of this deficiency that attacks my physical body. Avenge me, God, of this mental disorder that threatens to take my sanity. Avenge me, my God. Avenge me, Lord, of that spirit that attacks my spouse, that attacks my kids. Avenge me, my God. Avenge me in the name of Jesus. It's a cry. It's a cry that the Father wants to answer. But he asks you and me to press through and not faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. Do you need to know it? Don't faint. Don't faint. Avenge me, God. Avenge me. Avenge me, God. Hallelujah. I need it. I need it. And God will use it. Avenge me, Lord. Avenge me of my adversary who's bragging that he has conquered, he has stood. Avenge me. And so it's not over, it's not complete. I am still alive to pray. I still have to, to give prayer to the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Avenge me. Avenge me. Avenge me.
ever been off to the Thank place on the side it feels like the devil's laughing at you mocking at you you go to Luke chapter 18 verse number 8 and say when the Lord comes is he going to find faith on this earth yes he is I go back and read verse number 1 and say men will always pray and not faint to see this come to pass just judge will accommodate that widow, how much more will God accommodate his beloved if we cry to him day and night. Amen. I love you church. Thank you. Thank you. How many are going to walk out of here better than you came in? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many glad you get to walk out? Amen. We're going to pray for some. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, God will answer such a prayer. It's his will that none be lost. Is that not true? Hallelujah. So. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. A few of you are. Rest of you stay. I'll give you in round number two. I don't want anybody to miss out. Amen. I love my Lord. Isn't he awesome? He's so awesome. I don't know. He's just awesome. That's what he is. He's an awesome God. And I'm glad I get to serve him. I know y'all are too. Isn't that right? Oh, amen, amen, amen. What a blessing. Brother Baker, would you dismiss us in prayer, my brother? Yeah, you. Amen and amen. Love each other. God bless you.